This week's show with the Needlepoint Dads is sponsored by CyberPointers. CyberPointers is 15 years old and is the only online chapter of the American Needlepoint Guild. Membership is open to all ANG members. Meetings are conducted every other month and are run completely online via an email groups I.O. program. They have an instructor-led program every meeting and love to see photos of member projects. Upcoming meeting programs include Earth Spiral by Terry Bay, Fibonacci Swirls by Olivia Hartshorn, led by chapter member Kathleen Brennan, Stash Sampler by Melita Glavin, and Stars and Stripes by Jenny Walter. Several workshops are planned for the 2024-2025 calendar, including designs from national teachers Kathy Reese, Gail Stafford, Don Donnelly, and Tony Gerdes. Be sure to check out CyberPointers' website at cyberpointers.org or contact a CyberPointers board member for all of our exciting current and future offerings. CyberPointers would also like to thank FiberTalk for providing listeners the opportunity to learn about new designers and techniques. We look forward to sponsoring future shows in 2024. And I would say thanks to CyberPointers for sponsoring FiberTalk shows, and it's a pleasure working with the group. And now, on to our conversation with the Needlepoint Dads, Harvey Kravis and Dan Blackwelder. Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr, and you are listening to Fiber Talk, the twice-weekly podcast for needlework artists. Our artists this week are the Needlepoint Dads. Harvey Kravis. Harvey, welcome. Oh, thank you, Gary. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, good to have you. And Dan Blackwelder. Dan, hi. Hello to you guys. This is a very unique opportunity. Thank you. Uh, this is fun. All male. An all male needlework <laughs> show. Can't beat okay. that. <laughs> all right. But, but we will mention one female, and that's Jane Wood of the Chili Hollow Needlepoint Adventure blog. Uh, Jane, uh, very instrumental in helping us uh, help make this happen and providing some background information. So thanks to Jane. And uh, if if you, I don't care what your needlework interests are, but particularly needlepoint. If you're not following the Chili Hollow Needlepoint Adventure, uh, you're missing out. It is a great resource, and Jane just does a fantastic job of providing uh, news and information for uh, needleworkers. It's really good. So. Uh, look that up and and uh, bookmark it and follow it because Jane she's been doing it a long time and just is just does a tremendous job. So um, thanks to Jane not only for helping put this together but uh, just ongoing, just being a tremendous resource. Yep, I really admire her. We have to get the background in first. So Dan, I am most fascinated. You grew up in North Carolina around the textile mills, so your exposure to needlework or textiles, basically, is through that, and you started with weaving. I'm, I'm just fascinated yes. by that. I mean, weaving to the point where you're doing art and selling fabrics. Did what? I, how did you? I how did. do you even attach yourself to that? Well, uh, I mean, the background as far as where I grew up and was in North Carolina in a very small town, and you know, the uh, the textile industry is was huge in the South then. Not so much now, but they were in my town. They were yarn mills. They actually produced yarn from cotton and other fibers. They didn't actually produce the uh, fabric. Yeah. So uh, even my my grandfather owned one of the the uh, textile mills in our town, a small one. But I it, I I didn't have much to do with them. But I guess just through osmosis, maybe <laughs> I don't know. But later in life, I did take up weaving because it just like looked like an interesting thing to do. So I, I got the loom and I kind of went at it full force. And I did some I did do some art pieces, I guess you could call them for Bank of America and a few other galleries. But I really like doing uh, yardage. I like doing fabric that could be used. So I did uh, this fabric for a particular chair that Gump's department store, if you're familiar with Gump's in San Francisco, they sold. And I made my own pillows for that chair. 
and people liked it so much, I showed samples to the, the interior design department at Gump's, and they took me on to do custom pillows for that particular chair. That lasted a few years, actually, and very rewarding. I like sort of churning it out. Yeah. You know, and then from that, then I, I segued to needlepoint later. Yeah. Did, you know, we've talked to a handful of weavers, and that whole loom thing can really get out of control. I mean, we've talked to a couple where, they, I mean, they have basically a small building to hold all their looms. Did, <laughs> yeah. how, how far down the rabbit hole did you go? Well, not that far. I just I just had a, a nice loom, a Leclerc loom in the basement of my house. Okay. A studio, studio if you call it. And it was a hobby for me. I, I mean, I didn't really think I'd turn it into something lucrative. And it, it, when I say lucrative... Uh, on the downside, I didn't get rich from it. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I just wonder because uh, that's uh, that's an easy one to invest yourself in several looms and just have a whole factory going very quickly. Oh right. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get you know you can get in too deep. Yeah. That's for sure. You know. But I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the labor of it. Actually, I was a younger man then, and. Uh, you know, I could work all day just producing yardage, uh, which I was very, very proud of, actually. Well, well that's got to be a relaxing rhythm, weaving. Just There, there must is. be a, a rhythm to it, yeah. Well, it, there's a monotony to it, I suppose, as there, as there is a monotony to needlepoint. I remember years ago I was interviewed by a business magazine because I owned a successful business up in the wine country. And they said, if you weren't doing this job, what would you like to do? And I said, I think I would enjoy being on an assembly line doing the exact same thing over and over all uh -huh. day long. And he was shocked to hear that. But it was kind of the truth. Uh -huh. And, and I've, had, I've had jobs in college that were incredibly monotonous. And I was, I was really into it. So needlepoint is certainly that in a way. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You you can let your mind go free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So then, then you picked up needlepoint. How how did that happen? Well, um, I had a, we had a house up as a set up in the wine country, and um, some guests came up one weekend, and a guest of a guest started doing needlepoint. She pulled out her little bag of needlepoint. Of course, I was just on it, you know, immediately, and said, "What is what is that?" Yeah, and uh, she taught me how to do it right. You know, within five minutes, she taught me the one stitch, which I still do to this day. I don't know any other stitches. I, I mean, on these websites and these, uh, and hearing Harvey talk to other people, I know there's this infinite number of things you can do. I'm either too stupid or not interested. I just <laughs> keep doing the same thing over and over and over like a monkey, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but that so, hooked yeah, you. She, that hooked you. Yeah, then. that did. It did, did hook me right away, and I, I did what most people do. I started buying painted canvases, and um, I would do it, turn it into a pillow, give it to someone. This went on for a while until, and I sort of segued toward geometric things. So then, I later I thought I think I can do some on my own. Yeah, you know, make them up as I go, and I, I started that a few years ago, and I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah. For myself, it's just much more rewarding for me. Yeah, and then Harvey, you took uh, the more traditional route. Now, see, my mine was a girlfriend in college. She and her uh, and 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 her best friend uh, did needlepoint, and it was much like Dan described. Wait, what is this stuff? I got to see this, and and then I was hooked. So, but you you your aunts did it to you, Harvey. Yeah, um, I had a couple of aunts that were doing needlepoint. Uh, basically usually pillows and uh, I thought it was kind of interesting and I was looking for something to do while I was watching TV because I was a teenager and this is like you know 50 years ago but I, I was watching a lot of TV and wanted to be productive while uh, you know kind of justify the TV watching <laughs> so um, I got a, a pillow which I still have to this day and it's a, like a multicolored thing it's a normal size pillow and it was from a kit got it finished and all. And uh, then I said, hmm, uh, I did a 
painted canvas that was a, a picture of a Chinese water carrier. It was probably about 14 inches by 18 inches, something like that. So decent size. Uh, didn't get it framed or anything, but I had it blocked. And then I started to branch out and started to think about how I could be creative on my own. And I, um, I, I did this backgammon board, which is uh, just like four or five colors. I learned a lot from that, from that experience because I didn't order enough yarn and I had to order more. And I learned, I learned the whole dye lot thing the hard way. And so uh, <laughs> it didn't, it, you, it's noticeable, but it's a cool piece. And um, it has some three dimensional dice on it. Uh, it's, and it's, uh, you know, fairly vibrant colors. Um, but uh, so that, and I also, the other mistake I made with that, or at least in my mind, it was a mistake, was I put glass on it and it wasn't museum quality glass. It was, uh, you know, just regular glass. So it's, it's very hard to take pictures of it. There's always a glare coming or a reflection. Um, not, not the greatest, but uh, I thought at one point, maybe I'd use it as a real board and play with it. Uh, but that ended up not being the case. So, yeah. Yeah. In the picture you sent, uh, uh, I, I, I felt your pain. Yep. There's just, <laughs> there's no way to get rid of those reflections. Nope. It, yeah. uh, you can hold it at 15 different angles and it's never going to go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so interesting because we, we all basically came from the same thing and a long time ago, uh, but pretty much the same origins in one way or another, and yet are still do and are still doing needlework. And um, I know for me, it was, like I said, the, the girlfriend, but um, uh, you know, I, I struggled for a long time, actually, I struggled till I got older, uh, and just didn't care anymore, uh, with the whole, you know, men, male doing, uh, basically what's a women's ho hobby. So, you know, sewing as my dad would call it. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I just kept it quiet. I did it cause I really enjoyed it, but I just kept it quiet. And of course, family members knew, but, um, uh, I, I just always struggled with that. And it was, you know, it was, I don't know, 15 years ago that I finally just decided, Hey, I don't care anymore. I enjoy it and I'm doing it. And, um, uh, did you guys have any of that or is it just didn't bother you? Harvey, uh, Harvey, you want to go with that? Oh, sure. Yeah. So when I was young, I, you know, and starting out with it, it, it the question did cross my mind is like, am I going to be ridiculed for this? Is it, right. You know, uh, what are other people going to think of it? And uh, I took, um, you know, Rosie Greer, as you know, was a, a inspiration to me for doing this because he was this big yep. monster of a football player, <laughs> yep. you know. And uh, he just like, came out and said, yeah, I do needlepoint on the airplanes when we're traveling from game to game. And like I said, wow, if, if he can do it, I can do it. And yep. that really, that was the nail in the coffin for me to, you know not worry about what other people were thinking. Yeah. Ro Rosie was my hero. He, he gave justification because if you're going to argue with a 300 pound football player, then <laughs> I'm justified. Yeah. 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 Named, named Rosie. Right. <laughs> <knows> right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. He, I wonder, I wonder how many male stitchers throughout the years uh, have leaned on him as the, uh, you know, <laughs> a you lot. Know. I yeah. think a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Leave me alone. Rosie Greer does it. I can yeah. do it too. Yeah. 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 No, it, um, but now you guys, uh, strictly needlepoint then. What do you mean? Strictly needlepoint. I mean, mean you, other, other stitching you, things. Yeah. Or? You don't do other techniques. No, I don't. Yeah. And I don't either. In fact, uh, it's, it's fascinating to me as Dan mentioned before, all the different types of stitches and, until I joined uh, some of these Facebook groups, uh, Needlepoint Nation in particular, uh, I didn't even know that these things existed. <laughs> I mean, uh. I, and I, and I, I don't even know if you could classify the type of stitching that I do because the, the, the pieces I do are large, have a, a many, many colors. I'm constantly changing colors th and threads. And... I, I don't even think it basket weave, for example, is possible in in the types of uh, in the detailed 
uh, amount of colors that I have in, in small spaces. It just, I have to, I, I have to, you know, go wherever it leads me. <laughs> yeah. No, what, what you do is particularly the old master paintings. Uh, I mean, to me, that's no different than a full coverage cross stitch where, uh, you, you have to have those small stitches to, to get the shading and all the little detail. There's no way you could put a Jessica stitch in there and have that work. <laughs> it just wouldn't do it. So yeah, what, what you're doing. Yeah. You're, you, you're with basket weave or tent stitch or whatever, uh, version you use. Yeah. You're kind of right there. <clears throat> so Dan, Dan, you did, you did something that, that fascinates me in that you went, into designing your own creating your own designs and that's that's a for a lot of people that's a huge leap it's, most people never make that leap from doing other people's work to uh to creating designs was that just uh you just had visions of, of what could be stitched and just started doing it or well i i i guess so you know that i've been asked that a lot and um I think what, like I said, I was interested in geometric pattern. So it was an easy thing. I, I couldn't do a picture of a flower on my own. I wouldn't know where to start. But uh, <laughs> if things are, straight lines interest me, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't have much in mind. My, usually my things are driven by color. Mm -hmm. uh, I might say I want something in reds and I'll use like six different reds to, to achieve that. And it, it, they come out, they came up pretty well. It's interesting. You, you brought that up because I've been doing needlepoint for a long time. I'm an older guy. And um, one day I thought I, I I'm on Facebook with some of my friends and I thought, I wonder if there's a Facebook club or something. Well, <laughs> how stupid am I? You know, I, <laughs> Of course there are. There's a club for everything you can mention. Probably some of them will be legal. But um, <laughs> so I went on there and uh, and, and found Needlepoint Nation, and, I, and they want you to put up something. So I put up this one I call Once Around the Sun because I had just completed it. Well, and the response was, I guess, overwhelming. I didn't know what to expect. But a lot of people were fascinated with the fact that it was a free hand. Yeah, and so everything I put up uh, has been freehand, and I get lots and lots of comments about that. Yeah, do you have formal art training that? Because I mean, your colors come together quite beautifully. Uh, well, thank you. No, I don't. No, nope. I never had an art lesson in my life. You're one of those. Okay, <laughs> one of those. But if could I go back to something else you mentioned? Oh, do, sure. Do a, do allow that? Oh about yeah, the, help yourself about the mail thing. Because I think part of this whole interview is because we're got two guys, right? Well, yeah. You know, yeah. and it sounds like you were what I'd call a closet stitcher. Yep, right? pretty much. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> as a as a friend, you know, I've sort of lived on slightly outside the norm in society. Uh, and as a friend of mine said one time, he said, "Well, when you came out of the closet, you slammed the door, didn't you?" And I said, <laughs> "Yes, I guess I did." You know. So that thing, the Rosie Greer thing, I, I never, I mean, I knew about Rosie Greer, but it's, it didn't register with me very much. I just went right ahead and did what I want to do. And I would say to any man or woman, and particularly young man or woman, uh, boys or girls, if you let that hinder you from pursuing a sport, a hobby, even a career, any kind of passion, it will not serve you well in life. You really need to do what you want to do. And those kind of prejudice shouldn't have any effect on you. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah. But yeah, like for me growing up, uh, I grew up in Michigan and um, you know, my dad was a, a bow hunter and you know, it was all sports and hunting and cars and all those, you know, those manly yeah. things. And, for me to even mention needlework was you know, just, yeah, closet stitcher. Yep, that's pretty much, that was me. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, there might be other closet stitchers out there. I'm asking them to come out of the closet and join <laughs> us. <you know. laughs> uh, oh, I'm sure there's plenty of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. don't you think? Uh -huh. oh, I guarantee you. Yep. 
Well, I was asking, I was asking a woman that's very involved in needle porn. She has a company, a big company, and was asking her about. Uh, they're going to reproduce some of my designs, and I said, she said, I like when a man brings me something. I said, why is that? And she said, it's the color, which I thought was an interesting oh. answer. Uh, she said, men have a different take on color than women do. So mm -hmm. there, there you can chew on that for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have, have you guys gotten the look when you walked into a needlework store by yourself? That, that, that what are you doing here look? I think so. Uh, I don't go into stores very often because I, um, I usually order most of my stuff online. Although yeah. um, my, my good friend, Randy Nelson, who owns the, um, the store in Littleton, Mass, uh, World of Stitches, uh, be, is the store I would uh, go to. And she was a great mentor to me, especially when I started getting back into the needlepoint life after a, a long period of, of not doing it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I did go into store a few weeks ago. I was on vacation somewhere and I, I walked in just to see like what what they had. They didn't have much. It wasn't really a needlepoint store per se, more of a, um, you could get like DMC yarn there or something like that. But And I asked what the price was and they did look at me a little funny, but <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I don't really care. Yeah, yeah. No, I've I've but, had that well, look several times, but hey, I'm here to well, here, here to here to put money in your tills. So <laughs> that's right. I live I live in San Francisco, so your, people here are unshockable. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's true. I was just on a trip there uh, in October. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, well, next time you come, you'll have to give me a hands up. Well, that very well could be next year. So I will definitely okay. get in touch. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So Harvey, these these I, I love the fa well. First, I love uh, that you followed the path of of stitching and then raising kids. So then the stitching gets set aside, and then it comes back when the kids grow up. But yeah. but the the work the collaboration, if I can call it that, with your wife who uh, you know, over the art history and the old masters, that's got to be really fun to do. Uh, working with your wife and developing these things. Yeah. So. Um... I, after uh, my mid to late mid twenties, and I got married in my I was twenty seven when I got married, just at our fortieth anniversary last year. Hey. Um, you know, I I had a twenty seven year gap with no needlepoint. You know, <laughs> um, two two beautiful girls, uh, very proud of them. They're all growing up. They live near us, uh, near in the Seattle area. Um, they, and uh, I decided to take it back up again. And before I got into the reproductions, I I, start, I designed another uh, of my own things. I did a playing card, the King of Spades, and it just had like six colors. And I designed it on paper, on graph paper. And I only had to do half of it because it's symmetrical. I you could actually turn the picture upside down. <laughs> it looks exactly the same. Um, and then after that, I found some software and uh, uh called stitchcraft and i did uh, some small pieces uh, with it i did a new england patriots logo which was my my favorite team at at the time and still now hard to believe the way they're performing this year yeah, they have struggled <laughs> haven't they <laughs> yeah um but it was a good 20-year run <laughs> and then um uh, after that, uh, I, uh, my wife's sister is, was a fashion designer and I started to get a little more ambitious and I found this uh, Picasso, it's called Woman with a Book. I saw it online and I said, hmm, I wonder if I could do that. And I just, it, I really needed convincing. I just didn't think it was possible that anyone could do anything that complicated. It had 40, I think 47 colors in it. Um, I just really needed some um, someone to help me get over that hump of whether I could do it or not. And so I did it, and I did it in nine months, and it came out great. In fact, I'm sitting right next to it right now. It's on the wall, uh, and it's beautiful. I actually saw the original out in the uh, Norton Simon Museum out in Pasadena, California. Um, and then well, after was that, that, I what just... Was, what was that like when, when you've spent so many hours creating recreating a painting like that and then to see the original did it did it feel pretty good what you'd accomplished 
Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I took selfies with it. <laughs> um, it's actually, I didn't realize how large the original piece is. It's really quite large. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, it was a great feeling. And, and the others that I've done, uh, I've done a Renoir um, and a Monet. Both of them are in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. And we lived in, Bo in the Boston area for over 30 years, and we were members of the museum. And so those two... Um, those were the next two I did after the um, the Picasso. I did the Renoir. It's a dance at Bougival, pretty famous. In fact, the two, uh, that one in the Monet, uh, La Japonaise, those two paintings are two of the most famous artworks in that whole museum, and it's a world-class museum. So um, they're very popular pictures, uh, and those those were great. And like you said, my wife was instrumental in helping me select them. Uh, she was going to be a docent at the Museum of Fine Arts and ended up for, well, I won't get into the reasons, but um, she, uh, yeah, she, every, every piece that I pick is uh, approved by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that like as you're, as you're stitching them, those, those old master paintings like that? Do you immerse yourself in the painting? I mean, mentally, do you uh, kind of explore the the painting as you stitch along. What th there's got to be more to it than just moving needle and thread. Um, well, you know, I use a scroll frame, and so I never see the whole thing ah. until I'm done because I'm I sew it to the frame, and uh, it, I find that interesting. And these larger pieces, which are generally about the size of two feet by three feet. Um, and I uh, started out using uh, pattern nine, uh, the Picasso and the Renoir were pattern nine. So 10, I was using 10 mesh count and I graduate, they went out of business. So I went over to Appleton wool and uh, those are 13 count. So what used to take, you know, 20 months to do the Renoir, a piece of the same size for 13 count was taking you know, three years. So <laughs> the last four pieces I've done have all taken three years. Um, that's 12 years on just four pieces, <laughs> wow. you know, so it's people come, um, you know, say, well, you must be really patient. And I think that's true. But to answer your question about as I'm going along, the, uh, with the exception of the Kandinsky, uh, the others, you know, I would get some amount of pleasure from saying, oh, I, I did this section of it or, uh, you know, like I did an arm or a leg or a face or, you know, a seashell in the case, in the case of the birth of Venus, uh, which is another one I'm very proud of. But the Kandinsky, I have to say, sap the soul out of me. Um, <laughs> there's no real form to it. There's, it's just a blotch of colors all over the place. And the previous pieces I did all had like 75-ish colors in them, which is a lot. But the Kandinsky had 87. Mm. And it was just too much. And I had to take a huge, long break after that. I think I took like an eight-month sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now in the in the pictures you guys sent, Dan, you don't use any uh, scroll frame or anything. You always stitch just freehand. I I do uh, because I'd like to work. Most of my things I think of in terms of a pillow. That's I've never framed anything, and I think that's because I think I think of needlepoint, at least my needlepoint, as a piece of fabric mm. uh, that can be utilized. And uh, I've always liked uh, fine fabrics, you know, Scalamandre and Fortuny and all those fancy fabric houses. But I, I look at it, and I, that's one thing I like about Needlepoint, and I'm sure other people would agree, is the quality of the finish that you end up with. It looks great. It feels great. has a terrific touch and uh, body to it. And I, I like that because it's going to last for quite a while. Yeah. So the weaver never left you. Never did. I, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Anyway, Still I there. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy it. I mean, but like, like, I don't know how Harvey stayed with the project that long. I mean, I start one. Two hours later, I'm going, well, when the hell is this going to be done? You know, I'm just, 
I want to move on to something else. He has amazing uh, stick to it. This I would call it. My my grandmother would call it. Um, and uh, I know he talks about the Kandinsky, but the, I love the others he did. I mean, how could you not? Because I'm a big Monet fan as well. But boy, that Kandinsky jumps off the page. I can't wait to see it in the flesh. <laughs> No, I'm with you 100%. Uh, yeah. it, like I say, uh, for full coverage cross-stitch people and then people who do, do uh, detailed needlepoint like Harvey does, I heard, I admire it all day long, but no thank you. I don't. I just... uh, yeah, I'm not going anywhere near that. No way. Yeah. No, no I'll, I'll applaud you all day, Harvey, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Gary. Yeah, no, they're beautiful. They're beautiful, yeah. Yep. So, so the two of you come together through Needlepoint Nation. That just kind of a, a from what I yeah. picked up, you just kind of took a shot to see if it if you might make something out of what you guys do. Well, yeah, Harvey took the lead. He contacted me, and you know we did a little you know mutual admiration back and forth, and then he proposed the idea of charting of him charting these pieces now let me tell you i never heard of a chart i've never seen a chart i didn't know what one was <laughs> but <laughs> but i said sure I'm, I'm game you know so he's he's completely the cerebral part of this whole thing which is uh, he put it all together he did all the detail work all the technical work and i hope I expressed strongly enough in the beginning that I was a complete Luddite when it comes to technology and it would be up to him. Now there's probably been days when he'd like to forget I said that <laughs> and curse me for not knowing these things, but he's done a terrific job of, of putting that part of it together. Yeah. It, you know, I, like Dan said, we were both admiring each other's work and, you know, I, I, I also noticed there were a lot of comments from people in the Facebook group like, oh, are there any charts available for this? Or I, I would like to do, you know, reproduce it myself. And, th and there were just so many likes and positive uh, feedback. I thought there there might be some, you know, business case for it. And uh, so, I, like you said, I, I suggested that I could do this. Now, I had all of my pieces before like all the major uh, reproductions were all done using the software, but I would import a, a digital photo oh. and it would co convert it to a pattern. So I'm not, I'm not actually charting all these, uh, these uh, pieces in detail. I mean, I would start with maybe a hundred colors and then pare it down by combining like colors together because obviously the fewer the colors, the easier it is. But I never really like, Built anything from scratch, but now with Dan's stuff, you know he had I, either via pictures that um, online or he's actually sent me most of his pieces. Um, I so I have them in hand. I'm actually starting from scratch, a blank canvas, and I'm counting how many stitches of a crew and how many stitches of black and how Ooh. many stitches of this color blue, and uh, painting the whole thing basically and. One of the things that makes it a little easier in some of the cases is that there is repetition. Um, there are patterns, and I can basically copy and paste uh, a lot of it. So that makes it go a little faster. But um, the simpler designs probably I can do in an hour. Um, the harder ones take days and, you know, upwards of 16 to 20 hours probably. Yeah. I wondered if you were able to copy and paste uh, segments because uh, I mean Dan, Dan's designs are uh, the patterns are they're visually dense if I if that's I, I don't know if that's a good description um, yeah but uh, yeah I mean there's a lot going on and it, you know your your eyes start to move around and you know, I I've had fun looking at them uh, yeah but so so you are able to to save some time by just taking chunks and repeating them yes yeah and and. Um, you know, the software has like uh, sh you can draw shapes, certain shapes with it, like squares or circles. Uh, I'm not having had to draw any circles, but mostly rectangles and stuff. And then you can use a, a fill, you know, like, a, you know, fills the rectangle with a certain color. Um, 
and yeah, I do a lot of copy and pasting. It, it makes it go a lot faster. I learned a lot as I went along when it, since I first started doing his pieces, so I can do them quicker now. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet the initial ones were uh, <laughs> a process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For Dan, sure. when you when you do those, I mean, the, the fact that you don't chart them out and ne had never heard of a chart, so you just see that visually, and uh, it just amazes me. And so you just start stitching at some spot with a general idea and and just let it come out of you. I, I guess so. Um, I, I love I like the term you just used, visually dense. Um, I think that's appropriate to to my to some of mine. You know, and um, I'm I'm sort of mentally dense, but I think they come off <laughs> pretty come on, pretty Dan. well. <laughs> well, they do. They come off. So sometimes, like I don't know. If it, did you see the red grid and the green grid pieces that yeah. I did? That's what yeah. we call them. Those I just started, and you know, one thing just leads to another, and I, I don't always know how I'm going to do the whole thing, but it sort of starts to set its own pattern. And they are repetitive. If you really look at them very closely, I think if initially somebody looks at them, it's just sort of an overwhelming uh, jumble of whatever. But if you look at them really closely, there's actually patterns in there that carry through on yeah. most of them. The most challenging one, I think, was called Once Around the Sun, and that's where it starts off in dark blues and segues into bright orange and red. Um, that was hard to do, and I thought it was going to be a failure, but I stuck with it, and I ended up liking the finished product on that. Yep, it works. You bet. <laughs> Thank you. You're, Thank you're you. black. You're what I mean, I enjoyed enjoyed all of your stuff, but your black and white stuff, wow. I like black and white. Not I think I don't think many many uh, women stitchers were drawn to the black and white very much. Yeah. Uh, as, actually, I've been trying. Harvey and I've been trying to rethink uh, some color approaches that I could take, and uh, we're getting ready to post one that I I really like a lot. It's simple. But the colors are a, kind of a deviation from what I usually do. Um, and it's going to be called Fiesta. So it has a Mexican kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very, I, you like it, don't you, Harvey? I think you I do. do. Yeah. yeah, I think it's good. Um, there's uh, some simplicity to it, but right. it's, it's, um, it's a nice piece. I think people Thank like you. it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, the, the the black and white ones, uh, every one of them just stopped me. I just, uh, uh, I enjoy that that's that, I guess, uh, not lack of color, but it's the it's the contrast and the patterns then really can come out, and uh, yeah, I I just really enjoyed those. Well, hey. thank you. I, I I did. I was doing a series of lumbar pillows. You know, they're sort of more horizontal, small pillow. Yeah. For my dining room chairs. And I thought, well, the women black and white, then you don't have to worry about it uh, clashing with anything down the line, you know. Right. right. You know, it's kind of interesting as I'm doing some of these charts that I've, I have, I, I, this is probably not a completely accurate description, but I feel like sometimes I have a little bit of an out of body experience in terms of, I feel like I'm in brain, Dan's brain a little bit, you know, <laughs> in terms of, I say like, oh, I see what you did there. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, how did, yeah. Or how did you even think of that? You know, it's a, uh, it's a fascinating experience for me. It's fun. Well, I know that mushrooms grow uh, up there in that wet climate you live in. So you should be careful about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh... You mentioned uh, there, there was mention uh, your your African inspired designs, Dan. Uh, how did those come about? Did uh, some experience in Africa? Or... Well, I've never been to Africa. Okay, no. uh, one of the few places I haven't been. And um, I, I thank you for mentioning those. They are among my favorites to this day. I like the I like the way the design came together. And I can tell you briefly what that's based on. It's it's a part of my weaving uh, history. I was sort of fascinated with 
backstrap looms. If you know what those are, yeah, mm-hmm. they, they, yeah, like nomadic people tie this thing around their waist and then tie it to a tree, and they they weave in a very small strip because they're nomadic people. They've got to pick it up and take it with them. So after they get enough of those strips, then they sew them together and it makes a p- piece of cloth. And it's a typical way that some African tribes made a finished piece of cloth. And I always thought it looked terrific because they don't particularly line up with one another the way uh, most conventional fabric designs do. Yeah. So if you look at it, it's that's what I was thinking. A strip here, a strip there, a strip there, and I put it all together. And I tried to use colors that are sort of uh, endemic uh, to, to Africa, earthy kind of colors. And I really am very happy with the way those came out. Yeah, they're very nice, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. You know, the, the backstrap loom fascinates me because you, you, you look, you know, you think back in time, how did people even come up with cloth? And, you know, well, right. the exactly. innovation to just figure out some device, tie it to a tree, and, you know, we, we can put together some threads and make a cloth. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first person who ate an oyster. You kind of went, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brave, brave people trying new things, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, Harvey, do... Do we offer through Needlepoint Dads your uh, old master designs as charts too, or is that not yet on the board? Well, there's two things holding me back there. Um, one is uh, a sense of pride, I guess. The fact I, I kind of always wanted them to be one-offs and not be reproduced. Oh. Um, I, they're this way. They're kind of one of a kind. Um, I don't, I don't, wouldn't know how to price those charts for one thing and another thing. Um, and the other thing is that it, the software, which recommends the amount of yarn to use, the number of skeins to order, um, was not very accurate for those. Uh-huh. And I ended up having to reorder quite a bit. And so I don't feel comfortable putting out the charts um, with the skein recommendations that, that, those charts have. So it's unlikely yeah. uh, that'll happen. I am, uh, I actually, uh, we talked about the backgammon piece. I I did a chart for that and uh, we may be offering that on the site um, soon or in maybe in a couple of months after we uh, run through all of Dan's stuff. Um, so that's a thought, we might, we might do that. Yeah. So there talk is another about, piece. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, talk about how how you guys got your heads together and said, "Hey, uh, Dan, you got some designs. Let me chart them." Um, did you? Was it? Uh, let me chart them, and then later, let's do a business. Or did you say, "Let's collaborate and do a business. We can sell these things." Yeah, the latter. Um, I said there seems to be some demand for your work. Um, I can chart them. I'll do all the work. You just sit back and be the creative genius, and uh, <laughs> that and we'll have a 50-50 partnership. And I certainly put way more hours into it than Dan does, but um, you know we're both retired and we have the time. And for me, it's a labor of love. I love doing the charting. Um, I'm a technical guy. I had a, a career in the software industry as a software developer for close to 40 years. So um, I was able to create the website. I may just use a um, a website from Squarespace, and um, I, I got help from my daughter, who is a UX designer, and she helped me design the site a little bit. Um, and it's funny, the the name Needlepoint Dads came from my older daughter, who had suggested that um, she wanted to do some social media to, um, you know, sing my praises as Needlepoint Dad, and that never really happened. So when this uh, venture came about I said well that sounds seems like a good good use of that name so we pl- pluralized it and came up with needlepoint dads and and Dan you just you just sit there and crank out the designs then <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm the I'm the workhorse you know he's the brains he's he's re- he's really a smart guy and 
I mean, I'm not saying just because he's on this interview, I can tell you he's really, really a smart guy. <laughs> and his whole family is, I don't know what happened up there, <laughs> up there in Edmonds, Washington. This bunch is pretty talented, you know, his daughters and their spouses. And uh, I imagine the little grandson's not going to be much different. Have you guys ever been in the same room together? Never met. Never met. <laughs> no, we met online like in last uh, like June, know. maybe, I think. Just like the whole world meets people, I suppose, you know. Yeah. But I, I look for the time. Uh, I have good friends in Seattle, but I do go up there once in a while. So it's quite likely uh, yeah. our paths will cross. I'll, oh, I want to sure. make it happen. It's a great drive. I made the drive from Seattle to uh, San Francisco one day along the coast or one, oh, one, did one you? week. Yeah, oh. was, yeah. I highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Have you driven from San Francisco down to Big Sur area? Done no, that? haven't done that one. Oh, no. put that on your bucket list. That's, okay. That's yeah, a spectacular that. part of California. Really okay. Is. I'll do that. No. Yep. So then uh, the, the Needlepoint Dads then, so we, we have uh, both of you with very distinct roles. And then what you offer then are the charts. So so people exactly. can buy the charts, and then exactly. the charts tell you what materials you need, and then that goes to your lo to their local needlework store. Exactly, and you know, I I think I hope this little this podcast will uh, encourage men uh, to to jump on this and try it sometime. It's kind of it's very satisfying, and I told as I told some friends of mine, I said. It is quite possible to do needlepoint and watch a football game at the same time. I've done it millions of times, <laughs> and the world didn't end, you know. Oh, every every Sunday for me. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Hey. Oh yeah. The Niners. I've been watching the Niners. We've been doing pretty well. Yes. Oh no, I, uh, right here in my uh, my studio room where I record and have all my stitching uh -huh. stuff. There's a TV right on the wall and. The uh, the scroll frame faces the wall, and yep, that we turn it on there on Sunday go. afternoon. Just let her rip all the way till ten thirty at night when the game's <laughs> over. Yep, I do the same thing. Yep. I absolutely do the same thing. Yep, and then Monday night I do it again. Yep, there you go. So yeah, oh yeah, yep. I, uh, baseball. Uh, we we uh, Beth and I have talked numerous times about what are the best sports. Football is excellent because you can tell from the crowd noise when the next play is coming. And uh, baseball has a kind of a rhythm. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, like basketball to me is you, you can't really stitch to that. Uh, it's too frantic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But baseball yeah. is ideal because even with the pitch clock, there's there's still a lot of dead time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's a big snore sometimes. Yep. You know, but... Yep. And I found drag racing is excellent. You can get a lot of stitching done with drag racing. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's the monotony again, you know. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> three-hour drag around. race uh, uh, show. Uh, there's maybe 20 minutes of actual racing, and the rest of it is just downtime. Yeah. 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 I'm, that's huge in North Carolina where I'm from, you know, that racing stuff. Right, right. You know, enormous. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, some sports are good, some aren't. And, and, uh, right. And we've talked about movies. There's some movies that are really good to stitch by and others where you just can't take your eyes off the screen. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yep. Yep. Well, you guys, this is, this is terrific. And, and, uh, always glad to meet males who stitch. That's, um, that's nice. Maybe, maybe that's the next Facebook group. Is, there you go. <laughs> yeah. oh, there you go. We're happy to start that. Maybe. Need to work men only. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I was, I thought it was fun that we played on the fact that it's two men doing this, you know, right. Um, not to pat ourselves on the back or, or separate ourselves from all those wonderful women out there doing stitching. But I thought, well, why not? You know, and, and when Harvey came up with the name, I jumped right on it. I thought that's perfect. Yeah. Well, and it's it's great that you you developed an outlet for your designs because those designs should not uh, uh, should not stay hidden. So it's it's you know it's just a terrific contribution to the hobby in general that uh, or to the well, art thank form, you. not not thank a hobby you. but an art form that uh, that these are available for people to create. And when when I look at your designs, there's so many, you know, the, the colors you choose, but uh, I mean people could choose any oh. number of colors and have fun absolutely with them. absolutely well you you're very generous to say that you know and 
already we're I'm getting replies now from people who are stitching some of my designs and they're really enjoying it. They say it's a lot of fun. And they, they, they said this, the chart that Harvey did is terrific, easy to follow. So that's fun to see them actually in the works now. And I look forward to seeing one of them finish that I didn't do. It'll be kind of funny to see that. Yeah. Well that, you know, in a number of um, uh, designers we've talked to, that's that's one of the things that they I think I think I can safely say enjoy the most is seeing what people do with their designs mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's it's just amazing what a design that cre- comes out of your head and then what someone else sees in it and and the way they interpret it and uh, um, yeah who who knows it might even be an inspiration for another one from you yeah no oh, there you go I hope so yeah that'd be fun. Yeah, it's it's um it's fascinating to me uh in any of these things when people post them online and you see how how they change it and change any design and like whoa, I would have never thought of that and yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think uh, it's a big leap to go from painted canvas to ch- charted work. Um it, it it's a whole different approach to stitching, right? Cuz you have to you can't just visually see, oh, I need this color on the on the canvas i have to look at this chart you know every so often to figure out you know what pattern i'm stitching and so um one of the things one of our uh pieces the we call it bw squares it's it's uh, our most popular and it's free on uh, needlepointdads.com uh is a good one it's only two colors it's black and white and it's a good one for someone who wants to do their first chart i think because it, it is uh, such a repeatable pattern easy to follow and only two colors so uh, i'd encourage people who are thinking about doing charted work to consider that in fact uh we've had a couple orders from for that one from one from italy and one from france ah. so uh we're international. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool when it happens out of the U- outside of the U.S., isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice. also, is it okay for to mention the fact that there's a company that's going to actually do mine in, in a kit form? They're going to have a painted canvas and the yarn. No, you can't mention that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it not mentioned. Okay. All right. I'm leaving all that in. Um, uh, okay. Well, all right. Now tell more. Tell more. Uh, well, it's a, a company here in San Francisco called Needlepoint Inc. I N C. And I went down there recently to because I needed something that my regular Needlepoint store didn't have. And when I walked in, as what we talked about before, they sort of looked up like, what are you doing in here? You yeah, know, yeah. Kind of thing. And so I started talking to the owner <clears throat> and she was, and I showed her uh, photos. I just, you know, I had my iPad with me or my phone or something. I showed her photos and she was all on it. And she said, would you be interested in us painting these canvases and selling them as a kit? I said, well, I need to check with my the CEO up in Seattle. <laughs> and uh, I <laughs> So Harvey's involved in this too. If 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 it if something comes of it, and they said they might have some things available in January. Oh, that'd be great. So that, yeah, it'd be fun. I'd I'd like to see that. So taking a charted design and then making it into a painted canvas. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she has this woman that uh, paints. Uh, she showed me some of the things she does, and it's kind of amazing, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, it's just you do got to be real careful about <laughs> where the where the paint goes. And right. You can do it, I think. So we'll see see what comes of that. Yeah, those people who paint so you can actually needlepoint and the stitches are all go in the proper holes. That's impressive work. I know. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. I'd rather count them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then, so then, uh, when that happens, then that'll be available through your website too. I think we'll put it on there that it's available from Needlepoint Inc. But we'll we'll, we'll push have a link. it to our yeah. website. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It'll be and, different. And then the charts that Harvey creates, those are are download or print or both. It's download. Yeah. So they when they uh, uh, order it online, uh, they have the option of downloading. It's a PDF, um, so they just download it and they're, they're on their own for printing it. So, right, yeah, yeah. Well, that nothing wrong with that. Yep. 
yeah. with that. It, it's a good format. I mean, it has a picture of the piece. It has um, uh, a layout of all the panels that are, it comprise the picture. Um, so you know what order to do things. And it has the all the different colors with a legend and uh, the catalog numbers of the type of yarn, which in, in our case is uh, DMC uh, Pearl Cotton 3. Um, but there's nothing to say you can't, you know, use the same chart on a different size mesh count. Uh, most of dance work is done on 12, but I know 13 might be a little more popular. Some people may be doing it on 13. The chart still works the same way. You just get either a, you know, a, a smaller or bigger piece, depending on what you choose. And uh, they can certainly change the colors as well, if, you know, if they want. So, right. um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, I was thinking, Harvey, you know, we all, this, this uh, chart, this uh, canvas size, you and I have gone back and forth on all the time, and everybody seemed to think 12 is hard to get. Uh, my shop gets it for me. I don't know if they'd special order. But one reason I think I like it is that's the size that's comfortable for me with my eyesight and my ability. The other thing I like about it, I just realized, is it's div divisible. And when you're doing geometrics, it divisible by two and three and four and six, so that I can plot something out kind of very easily using that kind of math. And it's harder to do on a 13 mesh. Yeah, that doesn't divide well, does it? No, no, no it doesn't. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so, Gary, okay, I'm going to be the interviewer here. Okay. <laughs> what kind of a man, man to man? What kind of things do you do? I'm just curious. Oh, I do all of it. Uh, uh, I'm I'm not a fan of painted canvas, though. Though that's what I started with. Uh -huh. uh, counted canvas is if if I do needlepoint, it's counted canvas, and I love all the stitches. Um, oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll pass on basket weave, um, but all the other ones I do. And then yeah, I've been doing some gold work lately, uh, cross stitch. Um, yeah, all of it. And I'll, and I'll try any of it. The only, I, I haven't Plus, done black work yet, but that's, uh, I have a couple books and, and want to okay. do that. No, I, uh, yeah, I'll do it all. Well, what, yep. uh, what kind of images do you do? Uh, I, I guess I, I, most of the time it's geometrics. Geometrics are what appeal to me. I love okay. the symmetry. Um, oh, yeah. and then uh, cross stitch is primarily reproduction samplers. Uh, just because of the history of them and they're fun to do, mindless sure. stitching in my mind. Um, but yeah, I, I like the I like, and I think that's what appeals to me with yours is. is uh, it seems so. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's more of a male thing. Geometrics. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and I think that's something that could be explored. What is it that appeals to men when it comes to needlework designs? Because I know it's not the uh, traditional urn of flowers. You know, I'll pass. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that that? Because um, you're you're one where it was old ties. Right. Yeah. 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 Old ties. Yeah. It, it adds uh, old ties. It, it it caught my eye because uh, I was walking through an airport one day and it was you know how they have those uh, high end men's clothing stores in oh, yeah. airports where oh I forgot my suit I need a suit quick. And they had a whole bunch of ties laid out uh, on a on a board hanging on the wall in a pattern, and your oh. work your work reminded me of that. All the stripes and and things yeah. going different ways, and right. uh, yeah, it uh, th that stuff appeals to me. It's um, yeah, yeah. I'm same here. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks. Uh, really fascinating, uh, fascinating way you've gotten to this this uh, art form and then created this company and. It uh, looks like you're well underway with, with a whole bunch of designs and, and uh, drumming up some interest. The website is Needlepoint Dads, and that's an S on the end. There's two of them, needlepointdads.com. They also have Instagram and Facebook. And uh, check out Chili Hollow Needlepoint Adventure, too, because uh, Jane Wood does terrific work. Thanks to you guys, and thanks, for everyone, for listening. Thank you so much. Thanks, for thanks Gary. Love